in order to do financial or economic simulations, we need to be able to model interest rate. Now, in a previous video, we used a capacitor and a current source to model a savings account, where we started with $10,000 in our savings account and we let it run for time. And this current source produced an interest rate or an interest that added charge to this capacitor and modeled our interest rate. Now recall that we use standard simulating conditions, which meant that the capacitance was one farad. So that meant for every Coulomb of charge, we gain a vote across the capacitor. So there's a one-to-one -one between Coulombs and voltage. And recall that a Coulomb stirred, stood for a thousand units of resource. In our savings account, one Coulomb stood for a thousand dollars. So one vote meant we had a thousand dollars. 10 votes on this node meant we had $10,000. And the key thing is finding the value of G to model the interest rate. Now, in our example, we modeled a 10% interest rate and we determined the value of this constant G. Now, G gets multiplied by the voltage. This branch of the current source senses the voltage or the amount of savings we have and it multiplies it by this gain factor and produces a small current that adds interest to our savings account. So let's look at this voltage over time and see if we can derive an expression for G versus percent interest. So here I have a graph of voltage in the vertical axis versus time in a horizontal axis. And the voltage at this node is initially V0 or V initial. And this yellow curve sh shows how the voltage changes over time. And I'm earning a certain amount of interest rate. And at 12 months later, I have a final voltage V sub F. And this delta V represents the interest that I've earned, for example, in my savings account. And this is equal to the percent divided by 100 times the starting voltage V0. For example, if I have 10,000 in my savings account with 10% interest, I would expect delta V to be a thousand dollars at the end of the year. So if we have, if we take 10, we divide it by 100, we get 0.1 times 10 initial gives us one, or in this case, $1,000, which is what we expect for our delta V. Now shown in orange is the current in this current source at the starting time. It's called I0. And I0 is this G factor times the starting voltage, V sub zero. Now over here, we have the expression for the current in this current source at the final condition, VF, I'll call it I sub F, is equal to the G times the final voltage. And the final voltage is the V zero plus the delta V. And the delta V is this expression, percent divided by 100 times V zero which goes into this location. So let's see if we can take this and come up with an expression as a function or G as a ex expressed as a percent interest. So let me scroll down here. Let me go down just a little more. Okay, recall that the equation 
for a capacitor. The capacitance times the change in voltage is equal to the change in charge on the capacitor. Now charge can also be expressed as an average current or a constant current times time. For example, current is usually in amps, which is coulombs per second, times time in seconds gives us coulombs. So current times time gives us charge. So if we want to calculate the average current in our current source to produce a certain interest, we can take the starting current and the final current at one year later, at 12 months later, and we can add them together, divide by two. So this expression goes here. This expression goes here. And to find the average current, we just add them together, we divide by two, and we can simplify this expression, and we get this expression below. Now we already know that delta V is the percent divided by 100 times the initial starting voltage. So if we substitute into this equation for delta V and I average, and we do a little bit of algebraic manipulation, we get this equation. So we get the equation for G in terms of percent interest rate. And notice that there's a capacitor term and that there's a time term in the denominator. So in our simulation, we're going to use standard conditions, which means that our capacitors are going to always be one farad. And our time in this case is 12 months, which is one year. And recall that in standard conditions, that a second of simulation time corresponds to a month in our real world time. So if we substitute 1 for C and 12 for T, we can simplify this equation a bit. And we get this equation for G in terms of the percent interest. So let's take an example. Let's say that we have 10% interest rate and we want to compute G. So 10 divided by 100 is 0.1. We have 12 months times 1 plus 10 divided by 200, 0.05. And when we compute this, we get 0 0.0079365. So that's the value that we would assign to G to get a 10% interest rate. Here I'm at the website economicsimulations.com. I'm going to select tutorial. And I'm going to select this third item, modeling interest rate. And it explains how to model interest rate, similar to what we talked about before. It gives our gain equation versus percent. And here is a, a simulation result. Bank savings at 10% interest. And this is the calculated, and this is the simulation result. And we get, get at one year, we get 11K, and the simulation predicts numbers that are very, very accurate. Now, if we scroll down a little further, we get our table. This is our table of gain value versus interest rate. So if we want to model 10% interest, we set our gain to this particular number here.